Please, sir, please, please, sir. Hey. Guys, you guys. want to video me like you do everyone else? I will fucking break your phone. Here, phone. Hey. Excuse me, sir. Please don't do that. I don't want to have to go into like revoking. Are you familiar with Antifa? I am. What's your relationship, or how would you describe your relationship to Antifa? Um, I would say, uh, well, Antifa is like a hard thing to define um, and means different things to different people. Um, so I guess first, like, um, Antifa is like a very loose collection or movement of people that counter um, fascist or far right. Um, in more confrontational or militant ways. So sometimes that's like physical confrontation. Sometimes that's exposing who they are um, and their bigoted, bigoted views. Um, so I exchange information with pretty much anybody that does, um, you know, research on the far right. Um, I sometimes will give information. Sometimes I will receive information. And at protest, I interact with just about anybody that's out at the protest. Okay. Did you know, well, I, let me ask you this. Did you know of Mr. No before May 7th, 2019? I did. How did you know of him? Um, I first uh, became aware of his work when he was a part of, like, organizing um, this free thinkers group. Um, and they brought in a lot of very controversial um, speakers. Um, and I attended a couple of those. Um, and then uh, shortly after that, um, it was he did some articles around hate hoaxes where he had claimed that people that were um, victims of anti-gay violence in Portland were actually faking it. Um, some of the articles that he did with a couple of white nationalists and he would like call them conservatives. So I became aware of kind of his uh, strong bias and right wing right you know, right-leaning coverage. And what I'm was... Just gonna, I apologize for interrupting. I, I understand the foundation that defense is attempting to lay. I think we're getting a pretty wide view here. I think if, if there's something specific that they're looking for that's related to this May 7th incident, maybe we could hone in on that. But just giving a general overview of Mr. Hacker's impression of Mr. No is not relevant to... Well, I will say that... It, any, any general impression about Mr. No, whether it's a positive or negative impression, just in general about political leanings, it, it's I, not I relevant. I understand. I'm just asking. If the it's agency. an issue, if it's if there's something that would give concern about safety uh, or something that was particular to this incident, that's going to be more relevant. So that's going to maybe we could focus okay. it in. Or I was very resentful and irritated with Andy, so I made the impulsive decision to grab a bottle by the water fountain and, um, well, the stairs, there's an overlook over the stairs. Um, so I was standing um, where, where he's, like, below me, and I decided to impulsively pour some water um, and then immediately set the water down and walked into the, uh, into the gym. Okay, what happened next? He came back upstairs. Um, it looked like he was looking for the person that did it. And so then I decided to, instead of doing this, like, hiding what I did, it was a bad decision. I walked over to him and I um, confronted him about the lies that, that he made about May 1st. Oh, and what sort of things were, were you saying to him? I mean, it was two things. It uh, was, why did you say that? Because I was the person that picked the speakers at the earlier rally. I'm sorry, it, what to the speakers? Um, the speakers at the May Day rally, the earlier. So what, did, what did you say before you said the speakers? Um, I, I believe you said he was the one that picked them. Picked the speakers, okay. Yeah. Um, and, and Andy had tweeted about how the speakers had called for violence on Border Patrol, which never happened. So. One of the things I said is, why did you lie and say that speakers were calling for violence on Border Patrol? The other being, um, you know, why are you protecting the Nazi that, you know, knocked out Heather pretty much? Okay. So those are the two things that I was confronting him about. And did you make any reference with regard to the woman who was knocked out? Did you make any reference to her injuries? I'm pretty sure I did, yeah. I mean, what do you recall what you said? 
anything about her her back or her neck or her head or the um it was either so. um you know that she was knocked out with a baton or she was knocked out with a baton and had her vertebrae broken one of one of those two okay so you weren't threatening to break no. andy's vertebrae um, were there staff around? Yeah, um, he he denied that he lied about things. We kind of went back and forth a little bit, and then within a couple minutes, the uh, one of I thought two of the staff, but at least one of the staff. Um, I don't recall if I continued to try to argue with him after that, but I do know that I walked away from the situation frustrated um, and went upstairs. Um, to continue my workout. So the third floor is the cardio. So I went to go um, finish doing cardio. And as I was getting ready to do that, I was continue. I was still irritated and frustrated. So then I had gone back downstairs and Andy and the two staff were standing by the stairs. So they had moved a little ways. And I just remember turning to the staff, you know, somewhat, emotionally and being like this guy shouldn't even have a membership here he protects fascists he you know sticks up for them protects them rolls with them just irritated with the whole um just his just his his coverage his dishonesty okay so what what happened next um then he pulled out his phone to film and i immediately slapped his phone and it it fell out of his hand um what was going through your mind? You said immediately. What, I mean, what was going through your mind when he pulled his phone out? It was just like, I do not want this guy filming me. Okay. And and what, what happened next? Uh, he picked his phone back up and continued to try to film, and then that's when I grabbed the phone out of his hand. Did you sit there for a long time and think about taking his phone? Yeah. We're, we're leading a little bit here. Okay. So if you can ask open-ended questions instead of leading. Certainly. What, what was going through your mind before, during, and after when you took the phone? Um, before he pulled out his phone, it was more just um, feeling and thinking about how people that work with and protect Nazis shouldn't be able to, you know, have gym membership there. I know it was irrational at the time, but that's what I was thinking. Um, and then during it was when he was pulling out his phone, it's, it was, I don't want to be filmed. Um, and then after grabbing his phone, um, I don't know if I had much thought about what I was doing. Why didn't you want to be filmed? Uh, I saw, especially over the, the, the last year, but definitely the previous months that he had named a lot of people, including these, sus these, um, subjects of the hate crime hoax. And he would name them and put their photos out, and then they would get harassed. It happened with um, the CARE organization. It happened with a lot of different people where they would get named, photos would get put up by Andy, and then they would get death threats or um, just harass, general harassment. And, Your Honor, I'm, I understand that you are the trier of fact here so that you can parse out what should and should it be heard. I'm a little concerned about the trier of fact hearing all of this because this is still hearsay. There's no foundation for any of this if he's claiming that people receive death threats, that's hearsay. Um, I just am asking whether we strike that or not, that we make it really clear what he is allowed to say and not. So are, are you trying to prove that any of these statements or any of these beliefs are actually true? Only, it, it, this is kind of the point, that it doesn't really matter if the statements are true. That's not where we're offering this. It's his subjective belief or impression about these actions, these consequences, and in a way, you know, you, it's, it's your honor's uh, prerogative to, to, you know, determine whether they're believable or reasonable or whether that even matters. Why we're offering it is not for the truth of the matter asserted in these, contained in these statements. I'm not even sure which statements, but just that these facts and circumstances and events were happening, and they had an impression on him, and that impression informed our client's intention. Because really, the key in this case is, what's his intention for taking the phone? Okay. So, like uh, prior rulings, uh, because this is not offered for the truth, 
it's not hearsay by definition. The fact that uh, Mr. Hacker has heard that other people got death threats doesn't mean that there actually were death threats. In fact, that's not something that needs to be proven in this case, that there were death threats or there weren't death threats, but it goes to the mere fact that he thought it was true, even though it doesn't matter if it's true, it could be false. Uh, that would explain his actions. So it's because it's not offered for the truth, it's not hearsay, therefore the hearsay objections overruled. Thank you. You know, what were your concerns about being recorded by Mr. No and why? And your Honor, I'm just going to, he actually said that he just didn't want to be filmed. All he was thinking was he just didn't want to be filmed. He didn't say he had concerns. I, I don't really see the distinction. Oh, but overruled. Um, concerns were doxing, harassment. Oh. How does hearing and seeing a video of your interaction with Mr. No make you feel? Uh, it's pretty embarrassing. Is that how you normally behave? No. Um, why do you think you behave that way on this set? I think that his coverage that day was more personal because he was smearing a friend of mine and he was making claims that were actually pretty dangerous um, around a, 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 an event that I was a part of organizing. Okay. More personal. Just, just some concluding questions here, Mr. Hacker. Um, did you ever, at any point, have an intention to take Mr. No's phone without ever giving it back? No. Um, did you ever make any attempts or have any intent to smash his phone? No. Or stomp on it? No. Did you rob Mr. No? No. Yeah, I'm just going to ask that we strike that last question. That's a legal conclusion he's asking the witness to make. Sustained. Okay. Nothing further. The last answer is stricken. So cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Um, so you talked a little bit with Mr. Scissors about uh, Antifa and uh, how they are about exposing people uh, and exposing their bigoted views. And uh, so are you associated with them or you just you work with them? Um, again, it's a loose collection of people, so them is a very uh, subjective okay. way to refer to it. And I apologize, I, I don't know a lot, so uh, bear know. with me. <laughs> um, so you said you will give them information and they'll, you'll receive information. What, is, what does that mean? Um, usually, uh, what I'm referring to is if there's a big protest and say like a proud boy beat somebody up, it's, uh, somebody being like, Hey, that person's name is this, or, um, I've seen him at this event before things like that. Generally. So like you would use the information you share to identify people. Yeah. Um, do you post that publicly or is that just kind of internal? Usually, yeah. So like on your Twitter? Correct. Okay. Is that kind of like what you described Andy doing? Yes, very similar. Okay. So you guys kind of do the same thing, just on opposite ends of the spectrum? Correct. Okay. Um, and you talked with Mr. Scissors about that you've been threatened. Uh, why do you think you were threatened? What, I mean, are you talking about a specific threat, like a time frame, or well, just so in general? When, it, when Mr. No, you were here when Mr. No was testifying, and he talked about uh, that he'd been threatened, and Mr. Scissors asked him if it was because of his work, the things he says and does, that, that he was threatened. And so I guess that would kind of be the same question, right? Like, is it your journalism that brings those threats? Um, yes, but I've had many threats where they literally name Andy as the reason why they're like, this is what you get from messing with Andy, or this is, you know, stuff like that. So it, sometimes it's very clear it has to do with my interactions with Andy. Uh, is that before this incident? After. Okay, so that's not really what we're talking about. Um, but it sounds like, I mean, it sounds like from what you've described that you actually have a very similar 
experience to Mr. No, right? You described being really scared and really worried and kind of walking around looking over your shoulder because people are always after you. Uh, and is that how you felt at the gym that day? Um, I, at the gym, I generally always feel like I have to look over my shoulder, if that's what you're asking. So why would you then decide to dump water on another person? It was an impulsive decision that I wish I didn't do. Okay. But you did instigate all of this. Yes. Um, and you said when you were talking to Mr. Scissors that, that the protest, the May Day protest, um, and actually just, just quickly on that, just so we're clear, we're talking about Heather Clark, right? Correct. Who was injured? Mm -hmm. Ian Kramer was convicted of that, right? And, right. and not Andy, no. Correct. Okay. Um, but so the protest, you said the protest was what led up to the argument at the gym. Um, but that wasn't actually what led up to the argument. What led up to the argument was you pouring water on Mr. No. Yes. And then you said you walked away. And then when you saw him come up, you decided instead of not engaging that you were going to go back and engage him. Um, while I was up continuing my workout, I was obsessing in my mind about how irritated I was. So I went back with intention to pretty much say what I said to the staff, which is this guy should have a membership here because of his actions. Okay. Yeah. Before. Cause I think you testified that you came upstairs, uh, he came upstairs and you decided to walk over to him and confront him about the lies that he made on May 1st. Right. So you didn't wait until the staff was there. You went over and confronted him about what you considered his lies. Yeah, so to clarify, there's two sets of stairs. There's he came up the stairs when I argued with him in the very first mm -hmm. place. Then I separated and went up a second set of stairs to the okay. third floor, and then and then I ended up coming back down. Okay, so twice you walked away and then decided to come back because you were really mad. I walked away once and came back. I walked away twice total, but came back once. Okay. Since. Yeah. Um... And so, uh, and just so I'm clear, Mr. Scissors asked you when he pulled his phone out, you said you immediately slapped out of his hand, right? Yes. Um, and you said you did that because you didn't want him filming you and that that was what was in your head? Correct. Um, and that you, you said you knew it was irrational? Uh, I wasn't really referring to that as irrational. I was referring to my statements around saying that he shouldn't have a membership. Okay, so yeah, so, you, so you're saying that you're, the thoughts that were in your head when you slapped the phone out of his hand were that you didn't want him filming you and that people who protect Nazis shouldn't be allowed to have gym memberships. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it was just that you didn't want to be filmed and you said you didn't have much thought about what you were doing. You just didn't want him to film you. I didn't have much thought about what I was doing as I was walking off with his phone. Okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about, talked with Mr. Scissors about like why you were so scared about this, right? Um, do you have Twitter? Yes. What's your handle? John the Lefty. Do you post people's pictures? I do. Do you post their names? Yes. Do you post criticisms of them? Yes. Is the goal of that to kind of publicly out them as we talked about at the beginning? Yes. Why would you do that if you think that that's something you're scared of happening to you? Um, I only do it to people that are violent and that have extremely fringe right-wing views. Do you consider what you did to Mr. No violent? No. Okay. It um, so it's stuff. okay for you to out people, but you don't want it being done to you. Correct. Okay. Um, and you're a journalist, right? I identify as a citizen journalist or independent media. I don't work for anybody. Right. Sorry. I, I wrote citizen journalist down and I forgot it, but that's a good phrase. Um, and you've been going to protest since 2016. Correct. Um, so when you, you recorded the protests? Record? Yeah. Yeah. 
And are those recordings and videos, are those your work product? Yes. Uh, and so if you were to lose that work product, that would be a big loss for you. Yes. And you've actually filed lawsuits over your cell phone being taken. No. No? No. Are you currently involved in any lawsuits? Against me. You're not suing anyone? I feel like I want to say no, but can you? I can, I absolutely. So I was looking at a complaint that was filed. Um, it's a plaintiff's complaint filed in federal court, and it may be closed. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, against the federal law enforcement. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Okay. So you are involved in a lawsuit where your phone was taken. Yes. Okay. And is it correct that in that complaint uh, you allege that as a result of defendant's unlawful seizure and failure to return Mr. Hacker's cell phone, that's, that's your phone, that he lost work product and was prevented from exercising his First Amendment right to report on the misconduct of law enforcement. Correct. Okay. So you would agree that taking someone's phone, specifically someone who's a journalist and records things and that's the work product, that's that's a big deal? Yes. Okay. Um, and you'd agree that when you were standing there, you slapped the phone out of Mr. No's hand and then you didn't stop you at that point took the phone and you you left yes no i didn't leave i walked away i walked away from the direct vicinity right and so i think you talked to mr scissors a little bit about kind of the order of operations and how you were walking and on the stairs mr wallace said sir don't do this but we watched the video a couple times what actually happens is they ask you repeatedly to stop and what we see on the video is that you're still walking down the stairs after they ask you to do that, right? I don't have any further questions, Your Honor. 